national development plan bi plan la bi nga xamne ni pour plan yi rewmi la naka la ñoy def develop rewmi plan bi ni domi rew bu neka yang si am wala ndp bi lo lo mu na gis moy ma commencé ci yoni bori passa mas fale ligui nañ fa ay yon modern route yon yi nga xamné ni yon yu bax nañ té légui ciono dem di taxa wala dem di am naka naka comme problème do lepp légui mu na wax né passé na am school yi ñu le nay taba li ndp bi ku neka mo wara taxaw gis né li ñu ñok mom ku neka dafa wara jël ownership né li man mako mom access to water ndox tamé war nañ ko mëna am gis nañ mu ngi am ay bohul ñu ngi am ay ndox li yépp mu ngi ñew fini mu ngi mu ngi mu ngi am légui ni sax ñu ngi ñew start eh nak 86 li kilometer road moy wuñaadu kunté haklang bobu nonu is a very big project bo xamné ni mu ngay ñew start am ci fi ak ay li bu new gis na time bu new so fok na dal am lu bari mu ngay am tam ndp bi tamé try na expand am rural electrification li project bi ni moy gox yi té yépp mu na am eh li kurang kunté amna kurang ki nguur bi président moko jité dafa am ene ak ité develop rewmi luko doré ci yoon yi ndox eh ak kurang l'hôpital ni school yi lepp lo xamni dal social amenity la social needs la lolu dinañ try ñu am ko suñ ko muñta am tamé ci suñ bir nek yi waye duñu sori so jele li nga xamne ni nga tie ko ne yo yak mom in fok nga tie ko nga fonka ko be pare mu mun latame njeriñ li nekut am ci benna anam wala benna bor waye luma li dal moy euh plan la bi nga xamne ni plan yi rewmi la te pour naka lañoy def be muna develop gambia bi nga xamne ni ñu ñoko mom ci lu bari comme no bi wa ci courant ci yoni ci ndo ci school yi l'hôpital yi ak yu bari 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 te gis nañ ne stana mu ngi am nanga nanga kon lolu eh naka sante la mu na wane mu ngi dem nanga nanga wow by the way climate change is a development problem it affects our welfare it affects development it affects our livelihood there is flooding everywhere there is disaster everywhere there is warm temperature that is killing our birds our ozones are eroding our coast is eroding go to nyumi national park go to Tanje Bad Reserve, go to Alahain River mouth, all of them are eroding unprecedentedly. For example, when we say climate change, we are talking about climate-induced problems. What are they? For example, land degradation is a problem. Somebody mentioned here, there is less productivity of the land right now. So we understand that we're dealing with climate-induced problems. So climate-induced problems also include poverty. Because when land is degraded and people are not able to produce enough food, they are facing the problem of food insecurity and income poverty. So in order to address these things, we have to do woodlot and you know, work with farmers, do introduction of salt tolerant rice, do bee farming, do all kinds of things that will integrate to bring the biodiversity back. Because we know that only planting one type of tree is not going to address the problem but we can do as much as we can many kind of activities that collectively will be able to address climate problems that we are facing here is very hot if you go to kiang it's less hot because they have good forest we don't have the forest here right now cutting the forest there is no law that is stopping people from cutting the forest or there is no enforcement that is stopping the people from cutting the forest So many people have cane soils and are dependent on the forest. What do we do in rivers? As Department of Wildlife, as Department for Conservation, we have to ensure that we encourage things that will plant more trees. We have to encourage that the soil got the real 
productivity capacity. We have to ensure that our wetlands are protected. Our mangroves are in the water, we have the fish. We have biodiversity rich for our people to survive without disaster. My name is Kaus Jame. I am Senior Wildlife Officer at the Department of Parks and Wildlife Management. I am also the coordinator for a project called Gambia Protected Area Network and Community Livelihood Project. The Gambia National Petroleum Corporation is the country's national oil company. For the past 17 years, GNPC has continued to deliver excellent services to all Gambians, from individuals to corporate clients. At GNPC, you are guaranteed the best quality fuel in the Gambia. Visit our stations and stop by our auto spare parts store where you can find petroleum and lubricant products, wiper blades, and many more. All these provided without delay. With 10 service stations located throughout the country and still counting, GNPC gives you the best customer service anywhere, anytime. Think fuel, think GNPC. Gambia, it is now time to take ownership of what we own. GNPC, Nyokomom, the Gambia, our homeland. Well, you know, anything I do, I want to do it well. That's one thing. But I am born in Dumbuto village, in a forest, live with birds and animals. One of my father's stepfathers was a hunter, so I know really a lot about animals and trees and forests. I was not a good farmer though, but I am also a community worker. All my life, I really want to do something that impacts the community. So whatever I do, I put that kind of notion in it. When you go to the National Development Plan and look at the chapter that represents the Department of Parks and Environment, I am just say, telling you what is in this document. Because we designed this document in according to things we plan to do in the, in the three years. And this is exactly what we plan to do in the three years. We want to change poverty level within communities that are surrounding our protected areas in order that we reduce their pressure on misuse and misappropriation of natural resources in protected areas. And by the way, our intervention is only limited to our protected area and our protected area communities and also where we have serious environmental problems like Bintambolon where there is land degradation. But otherwise, we are not everywhere in the country. I am a man who is a man who is a man who is a man who is a man 
di dora am ndok amu sak wer legi fum nek ni tora ñewna yoy dund sa dund moy mbé bay mo lay yobbu fekke legi nar su ñewé amo ndok tora ñewna borom jobon nga tax kang ma ñut fum nek ni legi ñu wakunté ay yépp du kenn nit dé yépp dañ son yegi comme que yeu ñonge ah ngeen set nakala affaire bi di dem ak ñun tam ciona buñuy dal ni du suñu sago ci loxo yalla lay nekké yalla mo indi ndok so bala ngay bé nga am ndok so amu ndok do mu na bé the department has interest in establishing a protected area in jokadu because we have a biosphere and a core area in Nyomi that need to be expanded and because of that we established a new protected area here in Jokadu. We you know, consist of land belonging to Upper Nyomi, Jokadu and Lower Badibu. And because of that there are activities in managing the area. So one of the activities is to deal with sustainable livelihood projects, also to deal with problem addressing projects. For example, people living within this community don't have access to fuel wood and timber for fencing and firewood and roofing so there is need for alternative so the project creates an alternative of establishing a wood lot in Kuntaya that can provide the local people with firewood and also timber and also with fencing materials so the project is established but belong to the community of Kuntaya We had a series of uh, problems um, pertaining to um, firewood and timbers for um, roofing. Um, then what we did was um, we deemed it necessary to get into the forest or get into the bush and get trees cut to use it for our um, purpose. We engaged throughout, um, getting into the forest, cutting down trees, um, to use it for firewood and also um, when it comes to timber, timbers and, and whatsoever, we also um, deem it fit to also get again into the forest or into the post to get um, uh, uh, um, trees for roofing and whatsoever. The challenge is where there is too much pressure on the resources of the National Park of Jokadu. And because there is too much pressure, it's because the local people need to meet their ends. As a matter of fact, they have to go into the fields, cut trees to use as fuel wood or for roofing or for timber, particularly mangrove. So we see it necessary to establish woodlot in those communities. This is the first one for that matter, but to establish woodlots in those communities so that pressure on those resources, we are able to reduce them. So in the long term, there is no even, you know, pressure in terms of going into the national park to fetch food and and mangrove. Our main objective is to ensure that you know the resources are utilized in a very sustainable manner. We focus more on community development aspect. That is one, one component and the natural resource management. So you've seen the headquarters of Jokadu National Park. If you looked at um, the catchment areas here, Kuntia in particular, um, we have less trees because um, it, this was um, a normal routine. Every Tom, Dick and Harry can get up, get a tree fall for no just cost. But now, uh, with the intervention of this project, uh, um, we are trying to restore the lost trees and whatsoever. And of course, it impacted negatively on, on our cultivations. Because if you looked at, um, before you get um, good harvest, you need to get um, the rain that is required. And by doing so, you need also to, to, get, a, to get at least um, the appropriate trees, because no tree, no water, no tree, no life. So then tree um, is very paramount in whatsoever. So this is why we, we are very glad to see um, uh, um, your intervention is, is, is within. The reason why we are doing that is to reduce the level of poverty. Okay? And like you, understand, you know that the government is doing a lot to, to, to support local people. So as a government department, we think this is very relevant. To begin with some of the programs, uh, projects on, or programs we are doing uh, in the country, uh, one of them is like restoration program. As a conservation department, we are doing a lot of restoration. We will be seeing some of the sites. We are doing mangrove restoration and we are doing upland restoration. 
and this farmer package is also part of the restoration program because the farmer is expected to plant at least 20 trees and this will be later expanded to other members of the community as well. So this is a very good initiative because this part of the country, that is the northern part of the country, not Bank region, is very degraded and they are seriously affected. When um, we had this intervention, we were um, being fully informed. Um, it is not a, 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 an ideal decision to do, but rather um, to uh, do um, what we call um, this afforestation in order to uh, uh, plant trees um, to be used in post uh, the, um, this posterity. Well, Woodlot is an area that is planted with a lot of trees. Not one tree here and another tree five meters, but it means every meter you have to get a tree there. You train them, manage them until they grow bigger, that you can harvest them in terms of, uh, in terms of compartments. Here where we are, we have six, six compartments. So when we are harvesting, we start with one compartment this year, next year we harvest another, the following year we harvest another. Each year there will be a compartment to harvest. So it is on rotation basis. In a protected area, most of our protected areas, we have wetland component and the terrestrial component. The reason why we are focusing on the wetland, because if we say food security, it's not only rice cultivation or maybe ground cultivation. We have the fishery sector. He made mention of mangroves. Mangroves, they are very important. I'm sure when we get there, he will talk more about mangroves because mangroves, you know, they help, you know, in our fishery sector. <laughs> nga nga dulañu tanka pour mo kana nyamo fay jang andu mo kana mangol kuntu mo kana fem noringo bondi nang saté kono kana fena jang wala ka dimbata ka mala andu fana mangol ñim fana ñanta mangol ñi ndol fana ka mangol fana lafa no jande ni mangol ngaje daw da be fakan ron ka mangol ñi ne kana ka lafa je waya bay mangol ñi sa it's a Siano Yamin environment of home because Fenjamal Levy, Mini Alan Gold, Fanan Pijan, Old Fanan K from Muna Farm Mangoni, like Niel Mimbe Bacon, Ni Wuluta, Ijama Baika Wulu Bacon or Bala Dendola, okay, Nimba Fabina, Niel Kadunang, Karapol, Sipa Sipal Bolenya, Fenjama Mianko, Bacon, Living Things or Ni Wuluta, Baker Bolon Dalabai, Ni Dunda Jerong, Burke from Malay and DJ, the Malayala Diamond Drum, maybe Karkilin, Karfla Yakon or Royce, Namurum Babacon, Purikana Mandros to. Environment <laughs> Mangroves are very important. You know, in the Gambia we have six species of mangrove species in the country, and these mangroves they play a very important role in terms of climate change. You know, they, they, they are very important in carbon sequestration. A lot of you know carbon in, is sequestrated using mangrove. You know, rather than you know the uh, how called normal trees that you could see on the upland. So that's why we think mangroves should be very much protected. And beside that also mangroves, they prevent flooding. You know, where there are mangroves, there will be no flooding. You know, mangroves also, they help to, to, to protect, you know, you know, how to call it, violent winds or storms, if I may put it that way also. But beside that, you know, also we can get a lot of food from mangroves. That is the oyster, for example. And the fish also, you know, they, they are normally born in the mangrove. They will nurse there when they grow, you know, they will go to the, you know, main river. So in the Gambia, you know, because normally the fish, they use these two ecosystems, either mangrove or the rocky areas. We have very few rocky areas in the Gambia. We depend highly on mangrove. The fisheries biodiversity depend on mangrove. Being the manatees, even some of these primates, they depend heavily on the mangrove ecosystem. So we think mangrove is very important. Looking at the capital city itself, you know, it's very vulnerable to climate change. But because of the mangrove ecosystem, it can prevent a lot of disaster and, you know, related issues in terms of climate change. So that's why as a department, we are focusing more on mangrove restoration, especially in areas that are degraded. So in terms of food security also, mangroves, they play a very important role.
of us use it um, for economic gain. Um, we have operators who entirely rely on um, getting timbers for um, uh, this commercial purpose. And with this intervention, by cultivating um, this amount of uh, tree planting, it will, it will absolutely help because next three, four years, we are expecting to get all here being ticked with uh, Malina trees. So this is something that will just happen um, in a short while. In, um, in the near future, we all expect to have here a very thick forest and it is entirely done by um, development of parks and wildlife. So I think this is, your intervention here is timely, is being embraced, appreciated by not only Kuntia, but even um, the surrounding of this place. We know that trees contribute to sequestration of carbon. If we have 20,000 Malayanas trees in one plot of land, that means that it's sequestrating a huge carbon, huge amount of carbon from the atmosphere. And if such a project is replicated in all the communities, this is two hectares. If we can have it in all the 17 communities, that means we will have a lot of carbon to sequestrate. Some part of this area, they use this cow dung um, uh, as a source of firewood. Now here, um, if we have these trees, of course we will no longer hazard on using this dump as um, a source of fire. It's not helpful, it's not healthy, because um, the, smokes that it, the smoke that um, it brings out is not, it's, it's not even advisable, because um, you could contaminate so many things in it, and it's not even hygiene to me personally. I don't um, see it as something that um, should, should be cherished or should be held. When we go to the other area, we will tell you our intervention in the farmland. This, by the way, is a woodlot, but we are also intervening in all degraded areas, including mangrove areas, including farmlands, and we have our own techniques of how we work with individual farmers to get these things happening. But really, we're trying to address the climate, climate-induced problem. And we've come to the field also to, to talk to some of the uh, farmers or the local people that are around here. So we are doing a lot of livelihood and bio projects projects uh, for, for these local communities dwelling around these protected areas. This is a farmer of Tural, Jokadu Dashland, National Park. Okay, I'm going to tell you that 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 I'm I was able to get a lot of money. I well, we are in an agroforest project. It's also part of the PAN project, supported by the PAN project. The idea about initiating a PAN project is part of our sustainable livelihood activities, but also contributing to restoration of degraded areas because we consider this region as an area that doesn't have vital ecosystem and needs to be restored 
not only in the wetlands but also in the farmlands and in the forest land. So and many of the areas that we call degraded in this area, in this region, is within the farmland. So we decided to do projects that will support restoration of farmlands so that the end result of sedimentation and erosion into the wetlands is able to, we are able to control it. But at the same time, promoting productivity of the soil and also promote reducing income poverty and you know promoting the sustainable livelihood of people living within. So the idea has a kind of multiple purpose. And because of that, we selected 15 farmers from 15 different villages. We are in Joka, we have five farms right here. So what we do is provide fencing materials for them, provide water facility for them, and also give them a kind of approach that they have to do when they utilize this land. That is, they can cultivate anything, but the policy is that they must have 20 trees planted within this one hectare area. And also they can plant anything, vegetables and any other thing, to be able to meet their ends. If they are unable to plant everywhere, they can invite their neighbors. Because, you know, it could have been a community property, community farm, but it's not going to work. We have tried it, I've been in this work for 27 years, and working with communities and doing a lot with communities, both for NGO and for government. I realized that what is going to work for me is to look for champion farmers who are already doing it, so we can support them to contribute to those environmental benefits. Yena, yela e fanshun da foye. Bari nyindu ninga do kwa che jang, ale ma koi. E mole le mina jang. Men be gadin fanshun yina wole le mina jang. Men taunde, jabonde, kakumbande, abebe abe makero be jang, Gambia jang nashai. At the moment nashai nte mba folo la sharola, watamelon. Bolo Kumashla, Ninga do Kofenga, Mina, Nimashuana, Ninasuo Nasuani, Saiwala Bahula, Nabe Lebulun, Nana Sharofi, Ninga Sharofi, Sai, to Kobemu, Nisharo Kata, no band, Meja Bochela, Namento Tamatoche, Nakakumbache, Najatoche, and a patent shot. But at a chain or unkilling, Ninkilin Kumbachela, Kanka in Befeland, Nun. One ten to be a ganiot. Kanka ola fellow one ten to langaniot ani kaus. Abe sunna alala alala do kuala wat. But you spring crops. What we want is mixed cropping. You can have trees between the lines. You can have bananas somewhere. You can grow, you know, onion. You can grow Irish potato. It depends on what you think is marketable and what can give you money. It doesn't necessarily means we have to impose on you. Or okay, you will put beans right here. No, it depends on what is marketable in your region and what you can make, that what can give you a lot of money. So in this particular region, planting onion can give them a lot of money. We are aware of that. So hopefully we think that the farmer is going to do a lot of onion farming mixed with other kind of cropping. But we are encouraging mixed cropping, discouraging deep tillage agriculture, meaning we don't want tractor to come here and just, you know, do deep tillage thing. What we want is a kind of tillage that is conservation you know, conservation friendly, you understand. And also we don't want use of organic pollutants like chemicals. We want you to use organic manure. So there are principles that they have to follow and by use, following those principles, they will contribute to environmental benefits, as I said, and they will be able to make a lot of economic gain for themselves. There's nothing they're going to return to us. We are giving them this because they give us a park. These are all benefits they are driving because they live within a protected area community. If you look at human being and his environment, the linkage starts from there. We are human beings, we depend on biodiversity to survive. Land, water, forest, and oxygen. All these things are a combination of the ecological system. That's why we deal with biodiversity, which means ecosystem diversity, species diversity, and genetic diversity. That's why we put we have a protected area approach because protected area is an ecosystem that provides all those goods for them. But if the community is really very poor and their pressure is destroying the community, the protected area, we have to walk out of the protected area, come to the community and try to develop the community in a way economically, environmentally, socially, health-wise, anything is part of conservation. So our linkage is since we deal with human beings, anything that affects human beings is just part of our approach. That's why we work with agriculture. We have a memorandum of understanding with the NEMO project. They support a lot of our activities. We have the same kind of approach with, with Navy 
and other fisheries and many other organizations or institutions in the country. But whether or not we have that agreement with them, we are still obliged to deal with issues that affect communities dwelling around our protected area. People around Barai, and we have a park they are called uh, Nyomi National Park. They, are exp they experience you know, flooding every year. Flooding is a problem, and you know, like the previous speakers uh, mentioned also, we are having a lot of coastal erosion. These coastal erosions, they don't only affect the, the, the people, but they also affect the biodiversity, because like the marine turtles, you know, they nest around that coast. And as a country, we depend on tourism and ecotourism, or, or if I may put it, tourism in general. We depend highly on tourism. And because of that, we have to protect some of these species. That is one aspect we are concerned with. Secondly, uh, we are part of many conventions. As I said, our department is the focal point institution for Convention on Biological Diversity, Convention on Migratory Species, you know, Ramsar Convention, that is wetlands of international importance. We are also on CITES also, that is international uh, trade and uh, on endangered species. So you see, as a country, we are also party to a lot of international conventions. Because we have very good policies everywhere, but the fact that we are not implementing these policies effectively is the reality. Most of government workers are not motivated people. They are not motivated staffs, so they are not using the best of their knowledge. They are also part of the clique that is trying to struggle and survive. So that itself is a setback for us as, as people of a country. We have this knowledge, we all know what is wrong, and we all know what is right. Talk to anyone, you will understand that all of us know what is wrong and what is right. But who is going to do it right? The, 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 the reality, the condition behind is the condition you try to settle. So that's why as conservationists, we really think about the long term, how do we, how, what do we do to be able to you know, maintain this biodiversity that is blessed to us? How do we really stop people from destroying it? It's, it's very difficult. Who is able to buy a cane so? Very powerful person. It is not less than $40,000. So a layman cannot get that money. So it, the most powerful ones among us, you know, are the ones who are destroying what belongs to all of us. And by the way, we have a tradition of people coming from everywhere and going into our forest and cutting our forest because we term it as an open access resources that belong to no one. Sometimes we even government work, we think, you know, government work is nobody's business. So we are more self-centered than community-centered. That's our problem in our country. That's why this agenda we are in now, we think that when we deal with individuals, we can make more success than when we deal with communities. We, it could have been a community farm, but it's not going to work. But if it's an individual farm, this man will do everything to keep this. He will do everything to succeed. So that, that's the kind, I think it has something to do with our tradition and all other things. Balconta National Development Plan B. Plan Labinga Hamneni for planning Reumila. Nakala Nyoy Def develop Reumi. Plan Bini Domi Reubuneka Yangsi Amwala. NDP B. Lomunak is Moy. Makumati Yoni. Bori Pasa Mas Fale. Ligan for Ion. Modern Roots. You are not going to be able to do 
a problem Access to water. Dotame, one of the is ndo eh ak courant l'hôpital ni schooli lepp lo xamni dal social amenity la social needs la lolu dinañ try ñu am ko suñ ko muñta am tamé ci suñ bir neeki way duñu sori so jele li nga xamni ni nga tie ko ne ñu yaako mom in fok nga tie ko nga fonka ko bi paré mu muñ la tamé ndiéri li nekkut am ci benna anam wala benna bor waye luma li dal moy plan la bi nga xamne ni plan reew mi la te pour naka lañoy def be muna develop gambia bi nga xamne ni ñu ñoko mom ci lu bari comme no fi wa ci courant ci yoni ci ndo ci schooli l'hopital ni ak yu bari 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 te gis nañ ne stana mu ngi am nanga nanga kon lolu naka sante la muna wane mu ngi dem nanga nanga waaw ñing problème mo meya lon ko wolé be duniya be torakan ta fo meye climate change euh man ni ka kan to sa fo no ika fa ay ko alhawa falingo falin falingo because alhawa ka falin ni bari euh a falinya atata sanji jamal to men ya lon ko a falinya nata sangar kana mantoro nati ndol hadama dingol ka ko ko ma wo sabu fo ndol hadama dingol fangol la kenya you know na na muna fangol la ala yeng so fengol menna mbe muna fan na wala nyaming wole la na tambita so wala na tambo wona tam mantoro la ndol ka so ningo mbe wo uh, talala wo to uh, wo mantoro talala nyanta juberikela mbe muna fan na fengol men na nyadile pour ka jiko aman la na tambi pour sama kama ku dol bi je euh menul be na sama wol fanan se muna fa ngo soto ni je so bari ning muna fa ngol la na tambi ta drong mantoro le kana so wo mantoro wole ñing climate change be sawu so pour ka ku mo suti andi comme in say na baluña ñanta wole falinna ñanta na ndanangul marala ñaamen asatara man lan na tambi ka ka ndanangul tanka ka je ko ndol si muna fangala sama deni ngol fanan si muna fa
Yeah, these are we have varieties. So we collected these varieties from one farmer because as a research, you know, if you see any new varieties with farmers, you just collect them and also multiply them. So when we put you know plant this thing here, so later we will now extract the seeds and you know multiply them and give it to other farmers so that you know this variety because this variety is, is very sweet and is very fast. So we, this is almost one year eight months one year eight months so look at the fruits what well, the fruits is bigger than the other ones the other varieties so we have we have amber different kind of plants here we have oranges you know you can come and see the auto we remove this seed and nurse them so when we nurse them we will also put them in the um, plastic polypod so from the polypod now we will just give it to the farmers because we want this variety to be you know in farmers field so these are sweet potato maintenance centers so we have we have we have you know maintaining about nine sweet potato different varieties here you know and two local varieties so because normally we went to farm when we go to farmers we collect the best varieties from the farmers that at least you know we can we will also promote those varieties and also give it to the farmers because if you know when we give this uh, orange test potato to the farm, farm, uh, farm, farmers Sometimes they even ignore some of their local varieties. So, but as a research, we just go there and bring those varieties and maintain them so that in future, when farmers need them, we can give it to the farm. And they are also good, you know, when you just try with it out. See. So, here we are, we are observing different planting method and land preparation practices. Because farmer, farmers are using different methods. If you go to the other side of the country, you find other farmers are using ridges and plant cassava there and other farmers are using mound, so others are using flat. So as a research institute, we, we want to test which, which planting, you know, which method and land preparation can yield more cassava, you know, cassava than the others. So because you know, most of the time people ask us, this, this method and this method, which one can yield more? But as a research, you should not talk off head. You should, you know, your, you know, your judgment should be based on the fact so this is why we conduct this kind of trial so that you know we can evaluate which one we can advise farmer and recommend to the farmers that this planting method is better than this other, other, other one so we have one slanted and the other one we just bury the material we bury the uh, you know the cut the cassava you know cutting so you see they are sprouting so this other one is straight we just do straight step method and on the ridges all these are ridges so we 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 randomize it here this one is straight upright so this one we just bury the planting uh, the cut uh, cuttings we bury ev everything okay and this one is slanted because this normally we use here we use slanted slanted so now we want to test which one which method of um, what this planting method and the lime preparation can yield more than other. So the other method is mount. The other method is mount because if you go up country, you see some farmers are using this method, and other farmers are using this method, and others are using flat. So now we want to compare these two method and land preparation so that to advise farmers which method they can use. So these are mount. This is flat. Flat. Because this normally, you know, even us, this, this is what we use. So now we want to advise farmers this which method is best. And we advise them based on the results of this trial. This is completely buried and these other ones are okay. The Gambia Social Safety Net uh, project uh, it's a Gambia government initiative supported by uh, World Bank and the project has three components uh, but the component that uh, concerns us most is the, is the NAFA, NAFA cash transfer uh, component locally called NAFA. NAFA uh, is a Mandinka word meaning benefit. The project is here to uh, address the issue of social uh, safety net coordination 
coordination of social safety net supports and assistance. Because it has been realized that over the years, uh, coordination of social safety net support and assistance was not well coordinated because there was no central institution that was giving the mandate to coordinate the activities of social, uh, social uh, uh, assistance. So as, as a result, this project, one of the objectives or the focus of the project is to ensure that uh, social uh, safety net support and services are well coordinated. There is a coordinating mechanism to ensure that you know, uh, such supports are well coordinated. So I think basically that's the rationale uh, behind the, 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 uh, the, the project. Currently, you know, there is social protection uh, secretariat that has been established. The secretariat has been established under the vice president's office that should be responsible for the coordination of social, uh, social assistance and services you know, and, uh, nationally. So that is one milestone or achievement that uh, has been achieved as far as the project implementation is concerned. And besides the social registry, that's a platform where uh, households within the project intervention regions and communities, each household should be registered, you know, on, on that platform. So currently, you know, that, that, that process is also in progress. Uh, GBOS, GBOS, that's the Gambia uh, Bureau of Statistics, has been contracted to uh, facilitate that process. And I think as we speak right now, they are doing the listing. Is it household? Household listing is in progress in, in, the, in the communities. The Gambia National Petroleum Corporation is the country's national oil company. For the past 17 years, GNPC has continued to deliver excellent services to all Gambians, from individuals to corporate clients. At GNPC, you are guaranteed the best quality fuel in the Gambia. Visit our stations and stop by our auto spare parts store where you can find petroleum and lubricant products, wiper blades, and many more. All these provided without delay. With 10 service stations located throughout the country and still counting, GNPC gives you the best customer service anywhere, anytime. Think fuel, think GNPC. Gambia, it is now time to take ownership of what we own. GNPC, no come on. The Gambia, our homeland. Dégala Nyonko Gerem Diko Santa, Tidige Bindik, Man VDC Membala, Man My Public Relations Officer, Bo Jambanjeli VDC, Yon Bini Yala Dafa Def Mo Andak Sunyor Zangdik, Nyon Binyon Sos VDC Ak, Be Adama Baro Dijel Reumi Benala, Wai Yon Bini Banko Dore, Belegi Nyon Nyon Kotopa, Tidige Bi, Ligue Bu Rafet Bin Def, Nik Busna Sun Economic, Tidika Bi. Before you are here, you are here, but you are here in the economy of the country. You are here to witness the society and you are here to do the same thing. You are here to do the same thing. I am very happy to be here. I am very happy to be here. Je suis très heureux de vous remercier. 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 
because of yon bi access biñ am ba pare mu ñu jox easy access joge fi ni dem sere kunda amon na time dañ daan round dem birkama dora dem sere kunda waye legi joge fi ni direct sere kunda wañi na suñ cost wañi na suñ time because dañ daan jël 2 hours pour ega sere kunda waye legi matter of 30 minutes ya ngi sere kunda lolu benen jego la bo xamne yon bi jox nañu ko ba pare president bi tamit kis nañ ne kuñu buga la ndik muno na em sukuta rek inaugurate yon bi dem waye mu ne fok ma ega jamba ndieli gis suma nit ñi ne ka fofu ba pare yon bi tamit yaakar nañ ne suñ doomi ak suñ siti ak suñ set setati yep dinañ ci am benefit because yon bi nim mel gis nañ ko ba pare ñu ngi ñaan yalla continuer talal ni dem gundu